Hi everyone, welcome to another session for Aussie Live this weekend. My name is Vanessa Crouch, or Vanessa Crouch as I'm known in my professional life. Um, I'm presenting to you today um, a session themed web tools for supporting inquiry and inquiry learning in, in any way. I'd really love to thank all of our sponsors and supporters for this weekend. Without them, this would not have happened. So a big thank you to Steve Hargaden and the Le Learning Revolution Project. Also to all of our great team at the Australia E-Series. I also want to thank uh, Cyber Academy for sponsoring us. And also for Coach Carol and Shambles, who's in the room, for their wonderful support in helping us get everything organised and very techno. Welcome to Paul and Shingo who have just joined the room. So to get started tonight, if you can, grab a little icon and show us where you are in the world. Shingo, I, I mean, sorry, Shambles, I can do that for you if you're on your iPad. You're up here. I'm on the north coast of New South Wales. And um, I'm not sure. Okay, so Shingo, you're on your iPad as well. There you are in Melbourne. Smile, Shingo. Uh, oh, sorry, whiteboard tools. Sorry about that, Gail. My bad. I thought I clicked that off earlier. So we've got a few people starting to appear. Gail's still up in Alaska. Oh, Shingo's on his mobile. Fantastic. And we've got Paul in India. And Carol's down in Victoria, Northern Victoria somewhere, so I'll put a little one there for her. She'll be back in a minute, I'm sure. So today, um, I want to share with you some of the tools I have used recently and also in the past in my classroom to support inquiry learning with my students. I am a primary school teacher, so at times, uh, inquiry learning with web tools can be difficult because it sometimes requires quite a lot of teaching of skills and, and how to use certain tools. So it can sometimes take longer than you want, but once students have skills, you can be really surprised, no matter what their age, what they can achieve. What I thought I'd share with you first is um, chart that compares a lot of different inquiry learning models. Uh, you can see there there's six models. There are plenty more. What I've done with this chart is I have <coughs> put them together so, so that each line represents the levels of the inquiry and that helps you sort of understand where each, each one of the tools Within its own, um, within its own level of inquiry, I prefer to use the Kathmodoc inquiry process model. I guess that's because the one that I'm more comfortable with. Welcome to. Uh, I've been using this for a number of years now, and for me, I guess because I'm comfortable with the language, it works a lot better for me. But you know, for other people you can use a different inquiry model or process model but still achieve the same results. It's just the, the language of the model that, that differs. So first of all, I thought I'd get your ideas. So if you click on the, for those of you who can, click on the little link that's live there on the screen or if you are on a mobile device, if you click on the link I've just put into the chat, and just type in some of the, the web tools that you might use to help students tune into an idea, to get them to engage with their learning, try and ignite their passion for a topic. And what I'll do is I will, um, if you want to type on the board, I will take that into the into the link as well. But then what I'll do is I'll um, I'll show you the results of that and bring it back to the board. So if you could do that, I'll give you a, a minute to do that and then I'll share with you the results.
Oh, that's okay. Um, I've put those ones in, so you can click on the poll. It's a live link if you're using, not using a tablet or a mobile device. Otherwise, just click on the link that I've just put in the poll there. Okay, I'll go and see what results we've got. Okay, I'm just having a look at that now. Okay, I'll just grab that and bring it back to you. Bring back. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to share that with you. At the moment, we've only got a couple of things, which is okay because there's always um, people that kind of move on like that. So at the moment, you can see, hopefully, if it works fast enough, that. We've got a few different things in there. Test models and spell city. Oh, please don't fail me today, connection. <laughs> Hopefully this is loading faster for you than it is for me. Being a bit slow today. I think I've overused it. <laughs> might have to try something else next time. So what you should be able to see there is the results of the poll and I've made it as a word cloud so that um, it's just the words. So that's what people have said. I'll take us back to the room now. <laughs> Uh, okay, Shambles. Uh, I might try and do a screenshot or something next. So, other than Tesmos and Spell City, these are some tools I've used to tune my students. As you can see there, and they have a lot in common. Yes, ThingLink Gale. I love ThingLink myself. It's an amazing little device. Uh, a couple of word clouds uh, creators, Wing Clips, which is a recent uh, find of mine. Particularly, it's really good for uh, the personal development. Uh, Wing Clips, basically, Sue, I've only just found it this week, and it was thanks to my principal who asked me to teach a lesson while I was away. Um, basically, what it is, is very short clips from movies. You pick a movie. The one I, I used was from The Grinch. And what they've done is taken these clips and they've organised them into categories for PD health, personal development and health. So the topics might be things like rejection, um, um, bullying, love, um, all of those sorts of things. It's it's really a fantastic site. I really recommend it. Like I said, I've only found it this week and I added this to the slide this morning because I thought this is fantastic. Uh, what I will share with you now is one, but it won't take so long this time, I'm going to share with you one of my thing links that I created for a, a literacy unit where we were looking at uh, folk tales. So we're looking at uh, the, we were looking at the Bremen Town musicians. So I actually visited Bremen, and I'd taken a picture of the statue that commemorates the story, and so I used that to link together a whole bunch of little bits of information, video clips about the story. So you can see me hovering over one, hopefully. That is a, a link to a, a YouTube video. I've also got one that is a link 
um, that is to the National Geographic Society about Bremen and the Bremen Town Musicians. I've also got a um, something from Bremen Town itself, and also another YouTube clip that has Rick Mail in it, which is very very funny. So. A couple of different things that the children didn't necessarily have to go out searching for, but I gathered these these links together on a picture that is relevant to um, to what we were learning about. And luckily, I had a picture that could go with it. But if you don't have a picture, you can actually take the URL from the internet and use that. Oh, great! I'm glad it's showing well. Thanks. Yes, that's right, Sue. Um, I've also I teach a year three four class, so I've been thinking about yes, I've also been thinking about QR codes, shambles because they're my new favourite toy. Um, but I've also been thinking about using it as a way for children to uh, gather all their learning and gather all their learning resources as well. So for Yes, that's exactly right, Danielle. They narrow their research, and it doesn't mean they have to go out to the internet and go crazy trying to find things that are irrelevant. When I want something in particular done, I do things like this. I, I use ThingLink, or I use a particular website that I link to our class website, or I choose a YouTube video and I link it to a ThingLink, or I create a, a, a word cloud that just inspires them to think about it. So that's the tuning in phase. That's the phase that gets you thinking about what has this topic got to do with me? What do I know about it already? What do I want to know about it? So once we know a little bit about it, we can then uh, start thinking about, well, I need to find out more information. It's about now that the children start having to think about, well, what do I know about this? What do I want to know? So my next little poll is, and if you want, you can type onto the whiteboard or you can click on the poll and enter your own ideas. What sort of tools do you use that help students find out information? What sort of tools help them gather information? What sort of tools do you think are suitable for your students or your learners? So I'll give everyone a little minute to do that. Okay, I'm starting to see a few responses. Edmodo, Symbaloo. Uh, yes, Symbaloo is fantastic. It's become one of my new favourite resources, uh, to tell you the truth. Oh, Symbaloo Search. Oh, lots coming up now. Fantastic. Now, let me see if I can grab that as a screenshot. Okay, let's see if this will work for me. Yay. So there you go, you can see our poll. So Symbol was obviously entered a few more times. Yeah, that's a shame, Shingo. Um, I don't know if it even works in my school, but I thought I'd give it a go here tonight just to see how it went. Uh, usually text can unblock it if you ask them really nicely and you suck up to them. So you can see here Symbaloo and searching. Symbaloo search is one of the, um, the, the, the highest responses there. And yes, Symbaloo is one of my new favourite tools, but in the past it, w it wasn't necessarily the only way I went about searching for information. So. You can see here I've got lots of things that I've used. Uh, 
to find out information. It's not just limited to searching the web or Wikipedia uh, or Google. I have set up um, Digo links, I've set up Pinterest pages, I've used Ask an Expert a few times, which is quite a good tool. And I've also used Skype a couple of times to connect with people who I know that are experts in a certain area. Uh, and there are there are great resources out there like the CSIRO in Australia who will connect with you on Skype and talk to children about particular topics, so which, which is fantastic. And I've got Twitter there because a, a friend of mine told me about a great experience they had by connecting with an expert um, in Twitter, which for them provided them a huge amount of information for what they needed to know. And luckily that expert uh, was able to talk in a kid-friendly way. So there are options out there for for finding out in different ways. And EasyBibs there as a as a backup because some kids needed a little bit of support in recognising that you have to be able to um, give evidence of where you got your information, you just can't copy it and write it down. Okay, so moving on to the next one. Uh, we've got sorting out. So after we've found out all of our information, what we need to do is we actually need to uh, we actually need to sort it out. So we need to look at our information, see if it's relevant, see how it connects with our original research questions, and and from there put it put it all in a format that helps us to sort out what we've got. Does it answer our questions? Doesn't it? Do I need this information, or do I need to throw it away? Uh, I put in the, the poll link there, and if you want, you can click on the poll there, and I'll give you a, couple, a minute or so to type in some responses, and we'll have a look at the next answer. That's better. Oh, yes, we've got a few things coming up there. Oh, Padlet. Yes, I love Padlet. Mind maps are awesome. Well, I know it. Not heard of that one. I have to investigate. Okay, I'll give it another 20 seconds and then I'll bring it back to us. Yes, talking is important. Um, let me... Okay, now I may have missed some here, but hopefully I've got them all. Now there's a couple here I'd like to know about, so I might ask some people to come to the microphone. Um, who was it that mentioned Linoet? Ah, okay. I missed that session. I was too busy preparing for this one. Would oh, it's a sticky note tool. Would someone like to come to the microphone and just explain? you know, how you might use that as a way of sorting out ideas. This is Gail, would you like me to talk about it? Oh, that would be fantastic. Thank you. I think I turned my mic off. Uh, Lino it is, is a sticky note tool. It's pretty straightforward. And sometimes when I'm working with youngsters, we will um, gather ideas or facts or opinions or whatever it is. And then we might color code them or sort them actually on the online board so that they can see there's probably more than one way to organize their ideas or sort out the information. So it's a pretty simple tool, but it works um, pretty well with kids. OK, great. I'll have to try that one out. Thanks for that. That's a good tip. I'm always a fan of new tips. <laughs> so you can see here um, some of the suggestions that were put up. Um, so we've got 
talking, mind match, Padlet, not a, not a, I'm a fan of Padlet. Um, Docs, student strategy, digital embarrassing. I'm not sure where that comes from. Oh, uh, it's talking maybe embarrassing. I'm not sure who. <laughs> yeah, Joe. It sounds it sounds like we're overlapping a little bit. Um, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that, Danielle. Well, hopefully you'll have some solutions now. Um, so what I've got here are some tools that I use to help kids sort out information and Evernote is a big tool that I personally use, um, not so much with the children, it, it, from, particularly for my age group, it's a little bit difficult for them to use but we certainly use Google Docs a lot. I've used TitanPad or Etherpad or ShamblesPad, I'm not sure what Shambles calls for use but uh, he has a version of TitanPad. Um, I've used Edmodo before and today's meet, that's it, Shambles Pat, thank you very much Shambles. Um, today's meet is actually very good to get kids talking about what they've found and getting them to question each other's findings and, and things like that. Because our school is, well, our, our organisation is moving towards Google Docs and the, the whole Google Apps for Education thing. I'm starting to use Google Docs a lot more just because I need the children to start to understand how to use them. But that doesn't mean that I'm limited to that. I'd really recommend today's Meet, particularly if you've got children who are grade three or older because it gives them a chance to interact one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, real-time writing, they can see what's going on. Uh, in in any, any of these, like Google Docs or TitanPad or today's Meet, they sometimes the first few times they use it, they kind of freak out when they see the writings moving and someone above them is typing in their space and actually they're not because it's just because the, the writing's moving down. It takes a little bit of skill for children to, to be able to use these sort of collaborative tools especially well because they may not be used to them. Yeah, today's meet certainly really good. Okay, next one, going further. So when we go further with students, going further is about, well, Shambles, did you want to say something before I go on? Yeah, I, I, I can't resist. I really want to share. I, I use these back channel tools and I use Shambles Pad. And Shambles Pad is actually built on Etherpad's free software. So you can put it on a server on your own school if you, want, if you have a tech, tech team to set it up. But I wanted to share the comment you said about the, the students go go crazy. I, every time I use it, and I'm mainly with the adults, every time I use something like TitanPad or, or ShamblesPad now, you have to give the people, the audience, the participants, 10 minutes to just be silly and write lots of silly stuff on it. And then it gets it out of their blood system and then we can get on with the work. It's very funny. It happens every time, whatever the age of people. And that's not bad, it's, it's great fun. That's all I wanted to share. Thanks for letting me do that. Yeah, I totally agree, Shambles. What the issue was with my class last year when I first started using a, 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 a collaborative, one collaborative Google Doc with them was they were upset about someone that wasn't in their group being in their little space. They're not allowed in there, Miss Crouch. They're not allowed. That's our space. We're meant to be writing in there. And oh no, someone moved my, my writing and it's, it's okay. It, it took them a little while to realise and I had it up on the whiteboard so that they could see that everyone was typing in it. It was really, really hard for them to comprehend but after the second, third lesson there was no issue. It was straight into work, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, okay. It's okay that it's moving down, we just keep moving with it. So it, it does take a couple of sessions for kids to adjust to, particularly younger children. And I'm not sure I, how, I'd probably use it with year two. Year one and kinder or prep, I'm not really sure about, but you know. Uh, I've, now going further, now after we've sorted out all of our information and we've got our thinking ready, we need to decide, well, have I answered my inquiry questions? Have I, from the information I, I've gathered, using all these tools, have I answered my questions? Do I need to find out more answers? Or have I got another question 
that I have developed from thinking about what I've found. So this is what we call going further. So it's about stretching further into the investigation, doing a little bit of deeper analysis, and certainly stretching out into the realms of higher order thinking. So I, I put in the link a little bit earlier, but I'll put it in again. If you'd like to click on the poll or on the link in, uh, in the chat, I'm well, great, back channel tools. Look, I'll have to have a look at those shambles. Um, I'll go over to the page now and see what we've got and see what, what we can grab from that. I think that this can be the most important part of an inquiry because it's usually here that we find out whether or not children have been able to answer their questions, whether they've been able to gather the right sorts of information. And when you're leading a child in an inquiry, particularly when they're a little bit younger, when they haven't got the experience behind them, um, it's important that you direct them in looking back at the information that they found in sorting out and comparing it to their question and making sure it focuses on on their question. So if they haven't been able to answer their question or they've only partly answered their question or questions, what is it that they need to find out? So directing them to to particular tools that can help them, once again, can can certainly point them in the right direction of their learning. And with some children, they need a lot of support, particularly in younger grades. In older grades, you know, usually they can sort it out from them, for themselves. But if you've got a child who's uh, got a learning um, difficulty or a child that has um, various needs with language, um, language support and so on, it's kind of important that you do support them. Okay, at the moment we... <laughs> Shannon, the question was, what tools would you use to help students go further? So do more research, focusing on what they need to do next. I've got one response so far. So I might grab that and then come back to the room with it. Okay. All right, so the answer there was Google. How would you help kids go further? Google is a very good answer, and as always, <laughs> Google is usually the first stop for everyone these days. It's not like the old days where you had all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good thing to do, so I totally agree. The, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a techie, techie way of doing it. Some of the tools that I've used are very similar to the sorting out, but I also have used lots of mind mapping tools at this point because it helps the students recognise and realise, well, I've covered, covered this aspect of the question. Yeah, it is easy to be blinded by the tech, isn't it, channels, but I'm all about the tech in this session. <laughs> um, so Poplet and MindMap, which is which are both free tools on the web, and Poplet is an app that you can get as well. Uh, MindMap, MindMap, sorry, is part of the Google Apps for Education, so you can get it as part of your, part of your Google Drive. Uh, Bubble US is good too. Yes, definitely. Um, these are a couple that I've used. I've used MindMap mainly because we're a, a GAF school, a Google Apps for Education school, because I can get the kids to put it on their drive or I can get our techie guys to put it on there. And uh, everyone has the same thing. You know, it's one of those things you don't have to worry about. Prezi I've used mainly when I am trying to direct their learning towards a particular area and they've completely missed what they're supposed to be doing. So I might quickly put together a little Prezi to help them out. Um, and once again, we've got TitanPad, Edmodo, Evernote and Google Docs. Great, Joe. I'm, I'm glad we're on the same path, even though you're a, you teach older children. It's still effective with younger children like my little cherubs. Okay, so 
So next we're look, looking at drawing conclusions. Now what this means, this part of the inquiry is, so we found out all of our information, we've been able to answer all of our questions, oh sorry Joe, adults. Um, we've been able to answer all of our questions, we've got all this information sitting in front of us, what do we do with it? How do we draw conclusions? How do we analyse what we've got in front of us? And these are really high order thinking skills. And this is where you need some very visual tools usually to help kids focus on what's important. So I put the poll information in there for you. And if you like to click on the screen as well. Um, I'm really interested to see what ideas you've got because I'm looking for a few new ones. Just to see what other people have, have found and been using. Um, drawing conclusions for me is the second most part of an inquiry because it's here that the children connect their prior learning to their new learning. And I think that that's the most significant and important part because um, that's fair enough, Danielle. Hopefully you can take a few of these away from here. Um, so drawing conclusions for me, once again, is the most important part because they, this is where the children connect their prior learning to their current learning and they start to make sense of it. And it's here that they start to connect with what they are doing and thinking as learners. Okay, so I can't see anything coming up on the poll there, so it might come up, but it might just be lagging a little bit. I'll take you through to my ideas. Yes, questioning is really important. So I guess this is the part where they can start discussing and bringing back to the group what they've learned and their ways of sharing that information are fairly unlimited. So you can see here there's quite a few tools that are um, very varied. Right, voice thread and Animoto are uh, great tools, both ones that you do have to pay for at a point. Um, Storybird I really love. Uh, I've only just I found it a while ago, but I've only really just become a, a, a lover <laughs> of Storybird because I, I'm starting to see its possibilities. Lucid Chart is just a is a is a mind mapping tool once again, but it comes from the, uh, the Google Apps for Education suite, so they're all it, it's all free as part of Google, and. It's really good at helping children map out and visually see what they're going and once again Poplet and Mind Map appear as well as Google Docs. The drawing tool in Google Docs is good for Great to have you back Gail. Sometimes the cold can probably do strange things to internet connections I'm sure and the time of night maybe in Alaska. Uh, I, I really enjoy Animoto. I quite enjoy <laughs> making little little interesting fun things in there. And I think the best thing about Animoto is it's not limited to text and photos. You can actually create a little video or sound clip that you can add in there and add that to your um, your little. Oh, Gail just bounced out again. <laughs> Sorry, Gail. Uh, you can add it to your little group of tools. Oh great, blog post Rocky, yes Rocky. Joe, would you like to come to the mic and just um, talk a little bit about Rocky? Because it's not a tool I'm extremely familiar with, but I have heard about it. Yeah, um, it, it's one I've used for students to get their heads around things like um, uh, we do employability skills. Um, things like how they might improve them, so doing feedback on that sort of thing. Um, also, I've, I've sort of used it on and off with students and it, I think it's probably, uh, one of the things I think it's brilliant for is language learning, but obviously I don't teach a language so it doesn't come up there, but it's, it's great fun and they absolutely love it. 
And one of the things I like about it is if you've got a very shy student, they can actually type their response in and then it becomes a spelling, spelling thing as well. Yeah, I guess that's true. It's important to have options for those kids that don't like to talk. That's why I like voice thread in a lot of ways, uh, because kids can just click on something and talk into a microphone where there's no one else around uh, and share their thoughts. Uh, shambles. Prezi isn't pre. I don't remember paying for Prezi. <laughs> Oh well. <laughs> I haven't, I guess I haven't used it commercially with children, but I have used it myself and I, I have given children access to the account, my account, so that they can work through it. So, um, yeah, sometimes these tools are not free. VoiceThread has a free account, but to, at, to a certain point you do need to pay for it afterwards, but honestly, um, that amount of money, I think it's about 40 or $50 Australian a year, I was happy to pay for it because the results that I got from my students, particularly my students that weren't great writers, it helped me to see exactly what they were talking about. And I even had a student who had, uh, was not able even to speak, he had serious, uh, he had dyspraxia, which means he can't speak really well. And so what we did was he typed, we typed what he needed to say into his iPad, which had an app that would convert into iPad Talk, so that iPad would talk for him. And he was able to contribute by, by typing in what he needed to and making it speak into the microphone. And he was part of that representation. So he, can't, he couldn't have done that otherwise and he wouldn't have felt comfortable sitting there typing things into the iPad and then pressing listen to me. So it was it was a fantastic thing for him and I think that's where for me voice thread became one of my uh, go-to tools for children who who certainly need support, particularly if their uh, literacy skills or their speaking skills are not very good. Okay, so that brings us to the last aspect of the inquiry cycle, um, which is the tools that you use to help students take action or reflect. So after we've considered all this information, we've built it into our own knowledge, we've constructed what we wanted to know, it's become part of what who we are now. Um, the inquiry process asks us to do something with it. So I put in the link into the chat and I'll put a link in in a live link into the, the boards. So when children take action, it doesn't have to be go out there and protest. It might be write a letter or it might be make a poster or it might be create something to bring other people's attention to this thing you've, you've found. Or on the other side, it might be just reflecting. What have you learned from this experience? What are some things you've taken away from this? How can we get kids to reflect using tools that we can find on the web? Video is, is one of the, the first things that I think of shambles because it's often one of the easiest, particularly with technology these days. To start with, I was just using my little digital camera and I'd give it to the kids and say, okay, here it is, set it up on a tripod. This is how you press record. Go for your life, tell me what you want to talk about. And then we start getting all these other fantastic tools. So I'll pop over to the poll and see what we've got. Uh, right, wow, lots of stuff. Posters, great, voice thread, yes, definitely. Let me, let me grab this and bring it back. Lots of different things. June dues. That's interesting. I like to hear about that one. Okay, I'll bring it back and put it on the wall for us. Uh, Joe, yeah, I've I was a fan of Squad stuff. 
um, but have and no longer a fan because can't get it to work in our school. <laughs> There's something, yeah, it's a bandwidth hog. That's that's probably what the issue is with it. And uh, our, our, I asked our tech guys to do something about it, uh, and they said no. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I turned to ThingLink instead. So you can see some of the responses there: posters, letters, um, comments, feedback, blogs, class. I'd say that's class blogs, interviews, great, presentations, blogging, blogsters, super. Okay, let's slip over to what I've got here. Now, though I'm not a huge iPad user, which Shambles is probably fainting from, from the sound of that right now, uh, our school does have iPads. Oh, that's okay. That's fine, Sh um, Gail. Um, recently, I may have started to be converted, particularly with the uh, music and video apps available on iPads. Uh, I asked my students last year to create a video that part of their assessment was to do with um, religion, and part because I work in a Catholic school, part of their assessment was music. And I asked them to create a, a piece of work that reflected their learning in a religion unit. And they had to share some of their knowledge and some of their learning from that religion unit, but use music to bring that together. So what they did was they, they actually they, they used uh, GarageBand to create the music, and we talked about the types of music that we probably would hear on on these sorts of presentations, and we had a long talk about, uh, and we played around with some of the options we had, and we said, well, we don't really want it sounding like a big metal mash, and we don't want it sounding like um, it's something that's going to make us want to cry. We want it to be something gentle and, and nice to listen to. So it's amazing what they came up with. I was really proud of them. And they put that, they actually put it in um, uh, into the Windows version <laughs> of iMovie, Movie Maker, and with some pictures that they created. It turned out to be a really good tool, and they were so proud of it, and that's now on our school YouTube channel. They were really proud of what they did, and, and they, they, can, they now still remember all of the things they learned from that unit because they spent so much time and put so much effort into it. So you can see here I've got quite a wide ranging tool. I've got the, the Google Apps for Education, Google Docs, WordPress for blogging, which is a good way of doing it. Uh, I, I use the Google Apps suite for that. The YouTube, yeah, it is. Um, if you search my school name, which I just put into the chat, you will find our YouTube channel, <laughs> which has a lot of um, uh, there's some student created ones there. There's some there from our HSIE unit um, from the end of last year about their learning about our local area. Uh, and yeah, they're public. The, the YouTube channel is public, so we like to share our learning. Um, so yeah, the, the children are able to create amazing things if you let them do it. We actually have a Google site that I've connected with them, um, with which I've connected with some student blogs, so the students are able to share their learning with their families without having to to um, do too much, really. And recently, my new class has starting, started blogging at home and just writing stories, which has got to be a good thing at any time of the day. It doesn't matter if that's, they're at school or not. If they're writing, I'm happy. <laughs> um, yeah, so... That basically brings me to the end, and what I've got for you is a number of resources, which I will go and grab those, and I'll put them in the chat for you. Um, these are resources I've used to do some of my research, and there's heaps more out there. Um, I also have included one of my tech tool, one of my scoopets, which I collect all my tech tools in, and there's a lot of things there that I'm still investigating. Uh, these are my contacts, but if anyone, I'll grab that, those 
those resources. And if anyone has any questions or comments, please put up your hand and come to the mic. Go for it, Sue. So, um, the one called Cool Tools for Schools, I um, recommend that all the time to teachers. It goes through and categorises different tools for, um, you know, different things like mapping, audio, video, um, math tools and so on. Really easy to use and the teachers actually got examples of things on it as well. Excellent. Thanks for that, Joe. Yeah, it is an excellent site and it's one of my go-to tools other than Shambles. I better mention that. Yes, Shambles, I do look at your stuff. <laughs> oh, he's left. Um, now I'm just trying to paste that information. It might not come through. Because I'm just trying to paste it from my document over. Uh, so thank you everyone for coming. Uh, if you want to contact me, here's my Gmail my Twitter and uh, my blog, which I haven't been very good at using lately, but I'm making an effort this year to blog more, but it's also connected to my uh, Scoop It, so often my Scoop It's pop up there. So thank you very much to everyone for coming. Uh, now, at the end, you will get a, a, a feedback survey, and if you'd like to go and grab one of our lovely badges, you're most welcome. Oh yes, and always come to our Thursday night sessions for Australia E-Series. I'm actually presenting this week, uh, looking at Google Forms and how you can use them in the classroom for assessment and as a learning tool. So you're more than welcome to come. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>